Jackson High School. It's the WKRG News 5 Mayoral Debate, brought to you by Budmaster and Christopher L. George, PC. Hi, everyone. I'm Peter Albrecht. And I'm Roseanne Haven. Welcome to tonight's mayoral debate between current mayor Sandy Stimson and former mayor Sam Jones. We are live from Davidson High School. And we are going to try to get to as many topics as we can over the next 60 minutes. I'll be moderating here from the stage. Roseanne will be in the audience. So let's get started as first we go over our rules for tonight. Those rules agreed to by the candidates. There will be no opening statements tonight. Our questions Questions were submitted by our viewers via social media and email and from some of our live audience members as well, and they were vetted by News 5. Each candidate will get one minute and 15 seconds to answer each question, and there will be no rebuttal. We will rotate the order that the candidates answer the questions, and at the end, we will give each candidate a minute and a half for a closing statement. Our first topic tonight is clearly the most important to the people of Mobile based on the feedback that we've gotten at News 5, and that is crime, or maybe the perception of crime in the city. It may have been the top issue 12, 8, 4 years ago as well. Statistics show that most major crimes in Mobile have dropped over the last several years and the decade, but murders are up, and earlier this month, we had a 24-hour period where five people got shot in the city of Mobile. What more can be done to reduce violent crime? What's your plan for the next four years? And Mayor Stimson, you answer first. Um, Peter, before I answer that, I'd like to say that after last week's debate, the news media fact-checked what my opponent said, and they determined that he was not telling the truth. I just want to say that anybody that's interested tonight, we are live fact-checking. Throughout the debate, you can go to sandystimson.com uh, and uh, see the live fact-check. When it comes to public safety and crime, that is our number one responsibility. What we have done in the city over the last few years, we have continued the downward trend. Um, we have continued to build trust among the various neighborhoods. Uh, if you think about what we hear, the morale of the police department was at an all-time low. Trump was tremendous. Uh, we had to stop that. We had to stop that by giving pay raises, which we've done. We've given the police four pay raises in the last four years. We have also <coughs> given them better equipment and better training. But until you rebuild the trust between the people and the police, you really never get to where you be. Where you should be. So we're continuing to build that trust uh, as we continue to do uh, walkabout programs in the neighborhoods and as we continue to uh, target criminals and not communities. Mayor Jones? You don't have to fact check crime in Mobile. Everybody knows about that, including even the first 48 knows about it now. And the problem that we have with crime is we are more reactive than we are preventive. The problem that we really have, the initiatives to curtail crime, the initiatives to stop crime from happening, the initiatives to get guns off the street, the initiatives to really work with people in the community, rather than picking two or three people who you think represent the community to really deal with crime, those are some of the issues we have. The other issue is that we have much fewer policemen on the street now than we had when I was in office. We have much fewer Actually, the kind of projects that we ran, the kind of initiatives we had to deal with crime, from youth crime to uh, even domestic violence, we stopped funding at a level where they could do the job, people like Penelope House, some of the other social service agencies that work so hard to prevent some of these issues from happening in the community, we chose not to fund them. So the real issue with it is, is that we are not using the approach that we could use. We have great police officers. We have great leadership. The problem is, is how they employ it. And I think if you had really true community policing, we'd see that the curtail. Okay, thank you. Our, our next topic is jobs in the city. Both of you have had success luring major projects to town. Uh, Mayor Jones, uh, you helped bring ThyssenKrupp and Airbus here. Mayor Stimson, uh, we've got construction going on on the Walmart Super Distribution Center and the Amazon Sortation Center. But what do you do now beyond that? How do you create new jobs in the city and what role 
do incentives, uh, tax dollar incentives pay in that process? And uh, Mayor Jones, you answer first. Well, the incentives play a role because you must be competitive when you're recruiting industries of Mobile. Uh, we've recruited more industries than anybody who's sitting in the seat in Mobile. When we start dealing with companies like Airbus, ThyssenKrupp, companies like the expansion of Austell, uh, many other of the companies, what we haven't done is taken advantage of the suppliers that should come with Airbus. We've not done a good job at all in following up on the suppliers. That's where the real jobs are. Airbus creates 500 jobs, suppliers create over 1,200 jobs. That's where we need to go. The other thing we need to do is really make the atmosphere for doing business in Mobile a lot better. There are people in Mobile who have been here all their life who are still unemployed because that did not touch them. So what we've got to do is really deal with underserved communities, that chronic unemployment group of people <coughs> that we have in Mobile that nobody seems to address. Nobody seems to address what their needs are, what we need to do to prepare them for employment, and what we need to do to create the kind of jobs where we can put the entire Mobile to work, just not just a chosen few. And those who work here ought to be citizens of Mobile. We're doing a better job than helping the unemployment rate in Baldwin County than we are in Mobile. All right, thank you, Mayor Jones. Uh, and again, please, no, no applause from the audience. We went over the rules uh, beforehand and asked you to please uh, honor those rules. Mayor Stimson? We've created incredible momentum. When it comes to recruiting suppliers or recruiting any business, uh, the mayor plays a key role in that. It's very comforting to anybody that's coming to Mobile to meet with a mayor that has been in business for the majority of his adult life, that understands what it takes to recruit and hire, what it takes to meet payroll, what it takes to have the transportation systems in place to sell their products. So as a former CEO, it has a big benefit. This past week, I've had two calls from individuals that want to expand their business, build a, a um, a, a transportation center here and one also that wants to move a business here from Boston. Uh, as far as suppliers, uh, I believe that we've recruited 19 suppliers since Airbus got here. And when it comes to the underserved community, uh, the, the businesses that have come in the last three years really are Amazon uh, and, um, and uh, Walmart. I mean, those jobs, those two companies have the ability of the capacity to be bigger than uh, Airbus. And so we are working to reach out to make sure that we touch all the bases. We're doing a supplier diversity program now, which had never been done previously. We're also cutting red tape to make it easier to do business in the city of Mobile. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question involves infrastructure and also taxes. Mayor Jones, you helped push through an additional penny sales tax. It was very controversial at the time. Uh, under your administration, that money was not earmarked. Mayor Stimson, you ran four years ago vowing to repeal the penny tax. Subsequently, the City Council passed a, a program to earmark $21 million a year, divided equally among the seven districts for infrastructure. And, Mayor, you've received a lot of credit for some of that progress. Where do you stand on the penny tax right now, and uh, how should that money be spent? And Mayor Stimson, you go first. Now, the Mobilians had a really bad taste in their mouth about the penny, and the reason was it was never spent as it was originally planned. Uh, it was transferred uh, into the general fund, and really there was no evidence of how it was being spent. I felt like the public should have a say-so in how it was spent, and it should be earmarked, like they had done in uh, Oklahoma City. And so upon it being approved by the city council the decision was made that it would be equitably sp uh, spent in each geographical uh, city council district so that you would have equity all across the city that's never happened before but it's one thing to say that we're going to spend it that way it's another to develop a robust program so that you have input from the citizens input from the city council input from the experts that understand the priorities and so today Citizens of Mobile are very, very pleased with how the penny has been handled, and I think it has as much to do with how it's been administered and what it's been spent on as it has anything else. And I think that uh, my administration claims credit for working with everybody, getting a collaborative effort to make sure it's spent in the best interest of all the citizens of Mobile. Mayor Jones. Let me first, Peter, correct one part of your statement. The money for, from the penny has always been earmarked. 
it was earmarked in 25% increments for th four different areas of city government. That was earmarked with the ordinance that was actually put together for the penny. So it's always been earmarked. The, the thing about it is it has not been actually for a specific purpose but for a cost center in the city. So it had always been earmarked. Uh, secondly, the penny tax was controversial, but when you're the mayor, you have to make some decisions that are controversial. If it's good for the city, had the repeal that Mayor Stimson recommended, suggested, and vetoed as it relates to repealing the, the penny tax, we would be in bankruptcy now. He's aware of that. I'm aware of that. If it wasn't for the penny, the council wouldn't have a distribution of money in their districts. If it wasn't for the penny, we wouldn't be competitive in economic development. If it wasn't for the penny, none of what's taking place right now would be possible. That's why we proposed it. We also proposed two annexations that brought another $30 million into the city's coffers. That's why the city operates well today, not by any action by this president administration. Thank you. Our next couple of questions come directly from our viewers and from our fans on social media. Here's Roseanne Haven. Yes, Peter. This comes from Meg Demaranville, who I understand is an attorney here in town. You emailed us your question, and it involves race relations. My question is, uh, do you believe you can be a unifying mayor across racial lines, and how would you achieve that? Mayor Jones? Well, one thing about that, we've had an eight-year record of that. We didn't have any division when I was mayor. My staff was as diverse as you could possibly have. The entire city was. We worked in every other area of the city and worked with everybody in the city. So as far as the diversity is concerned, what we need to do is deal with the problem head on. Stop pretending like we don't have an issue with that. And start dealing with the issue head on and stop making it appear that we are doing what we are not doing. And if we do that, I think the community as a whole can come together around truth. And once we come together around truth, we can put those issues behind us. Mayor Stimson. Since day one, we have talked about uniting this city with one mobile. We haven't just talked it. Every action that we've taken is evidence that we mean that. Uh, when it comes to this campaign, everything Sam has said since the beginning of this campaign has been divisive and has had racial undertones. It's insulting to all Mobilians. Uh, as your mayor, I believe in one mobile. We have created a supplier diversity to give opportunity to those that haven't previously had it. We have reformed municipal uh, court system so that there's justice for all. We have had a capital improvement program spread all over this city. Uh, we've had promotions uh, that have been changed so that it's equitable for everybody involved. I've walked almost every neighborhood in this community, something that my opponent probably has never done before, to listen. And the whole point was so that I could hear what the citizens were saying. And every time I knocked on the door, someone said, Mayor, we cannot believe that you care enough to be knocking on our door. Thank you so much for coming to, to my house. Thank you for your question. Our next question, the question was submitted to our WKRG News 5 Facebook fan page, and this comes from Diane Jones. Diane writes, how would you address the issue of the aging Civic Center, and can it be refurbished and remodeled? That goes to Mayor Stimson first. Yes. When it comes to the Civic Center, most Mobilians don't know this. Actually, I didn't know it. But we have like something, 378 buildings that have been accumulated over the year. There is no plan for the maintenance of all of them. Uh, there's been no money allocated other than a small amount of capital. So today we're having a very in-depth study done of all of our facilities, which includes the Civic Center. The Civic Center is near and dear to everybody. It's old. Money has not been spent to maintain it over the last probably 15 years. And so we have an option there. Uh, but first, before we take our options, we've got to know how much it's going to cost to fix it. That we don't know, but we will know in September, and that'll give us the leverage to make the right decision. It happens to be in a place that has a, a footprint that could do a lot of things for our community. But before any decision is made, there'll be a very open public debate about it. The mayor cannot decide in a vacuum what happens there. So the city council will be engaged, the public will be engaged, but we cannot just sit there and continue to hope it's going to get better uh, and, and knowing that it's deteriorating. So we, have a, we will have a plan that will roll out uh, during the next administration. Mayor Jones. There is no doubt that everyone here remembers you saying you were going to tear it down. 
that you were going to demolish it. In fact, you said you were going to demolish it in 2017, and so much pushback came from the Mardi Gras Association, you changed the date to 2018 after the election. That's what really happened. We do not plan to tear the Civic Center down. We plan to renovate it, update it, bring it to the point where it can continue to be the home of Mardi Gras in downtown Mobile, and that's what we had already planned. In fact, you should have inherited the plans. They're already there. How to, how to not just renovate it, how to upgrade it, but how to finance it. It's all there. It was left on the mayor's desk. Fact check. Okay. We'll move on to our next subject, and uh, Mayor, Mayor Jones, you'll answer this one first. It concerns our president. What's your opinion of Donald Trump and the job he's doing as president? Audience, Audience Mayor Jones. I think President Trump uh, is way over his head. I, I think that uh, he has created an atmosphere in the country that's not going to be good for any community in this country. Not only has he created that atmosphere, every week he continues to exaggerate issues that are just not truthful and they are hurtful to people. What's happening around this country right now, we all see it on, on the news. What's going on in this country is a direct result of the way that he started off trying to lead this country. He's fired half the people he hired, and the rest of them trying to go. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the bottom line is that the man was not cut out for the office that he has, and, and I'm not going to say what his real feelings are about people in this community, but I can tell you this. He was attacked enough people for people to understand that he's not the kind of person who should be leading this country. Mayor Simpson? Yeah. Um, I'm reminded uh, that really it does not matter what I personally think and what brings that to memory uh, has to do with uh, shortly after being in office, a young man showed up uh, to see me. He was from Obama's White House named Rohan Patel. Rohan, after a conversation, said, Mayor, I want to help you. So what happened over the next four years, or next three years, was that I had an opportunity to go to the White House on three occasions, meet with President Obama on a fourth occasion, and all the time I was promoting the city of Mobile. Recently, while in New York, I was with 40 other mayors around the world, and we all agreed, and it was told to us uh, from some of Mayor Bloomberg's people, <clears throat> you have the Republican Party, you have the Democratic Party, and you have the Party of Mayors. All right, and what he means by that is a mayor has to be nonpartisan to represent his city because the White House controls so many programs that can benefit the city, whether it be President Obama or President Trump or President whomever. As the mayor of the city of Mobile, I will establish a relationship and promote the city of Mobile to take advantage of what the federal government has to offer us. Thank you, Mayor. Again. Let's please try to hold our applause. Our next uh, topic is transparency at City it's Hall. What? Transparency. Mm -hmm. Mayor Stimson, when you ran four years ago, you said you'd remove the door to your office, that this would be the most transparent administration the city's ever had. But there have been issues with public access, so much so that the media had to go to court just to get the uh, copy of the city's body cam policy, and we've yet to see any footage from those body cams. And Mayor Jones, your administration was criticized for transparency when it came to the Housing Board and Hank Aaron Stadium, Police Explorers, Gulf Coast Classic, and others. So I'm going to ask each of you, how have your years in office been more transparent than your opponent? And Mayor Stimson, you go first. There is only one issue that anybody can point to and say that we've not been transparent in their words, and it has to do with body cams. We are waiting on an, uh, an opinion from the Alabama Attorney General to give us the guidelines. This is too ne new technology where there is no law governing it. When it comes to transparency, though I'm reminded, my very first day of office, I walked in and found out that the hard drives to the mayor's computer had been erased. They've been erased uh, in the finance director. So my opponent may talk about transparency, but what did he do when he left office? And that was clean out all the files, erase all the disks. And so uh, I have done nothing like that. We continue to be transparent. We will figure out how to do the body cam 
uh, videos, and we will get it right, and depending on what the Attorney General says, we will be forthcoming with that information. And so I believe in transparency because that's how you build trust. And the only way we can move this city forward is by having everybody understand that the mayor has nothing to hide and that I'm working for the benefit of everybody. Thank you. Mayor Jones? You know, the PR ploy of taking the door down off the office of a door that's never been closed for all the years I've been in City Hall. But what was not told is that there are two sets of security doors you have to get through to get to that door. They weren't taken down. The, the other thing I will say is that if, you, if we bought body cams, we should have had a policy for them before we put them on the street. We shouldn't put them out on the street and then come back and say, well, our policy won't let you view them. Nor should we use the excuse, well, on that incident, the body cam wasn't on. If it wasn't on, why do we even have it? The bottom line is that that's not transparency. It's not transparency at all. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't see transparency. I'll tell you what transparency is. Transparency is when you put on the internet every expenditure that the city makes. Transparency is when you see every dollar that comes in and when every dollar that goes out. Transparency is when you can come and say, look, I want to talk to the mayor about whatever the subject matter is, and you get an audience. That's called transparency. It's not some public relations ploy to make people think you're doing not, what you're not doing. Thank you. For another question direct from a News 5 viewer, let's go to Roseanne. Yes, our next uh, question comes from a News 5 Facebook fan, Michael Butler. He has a question regarding city employees, a specific group of city employees, asking, how do you plan on making the salaries of our mobile police officers more competitive? And that goes first to Mayor Jones. You know, our process was actually to do wage comparability studies to make sure that our police officers were in line with the other police officers in cities that size in Alabama. That's the proper way to do it. Now, I think that police officers just got a raise, which they deserve. I'm glad to see them get that raise. But whatever you do, you have to do something that you can sustain. I also think that we have to look at the other city employees as well. We, we have to be fair enough to deal with all the city employees. Uh, you know, our process was that we tried to really compensate everyone. I grant you that we, in my time in the administration, during the worst recession in the history of the, of the country, it was difficult to do what we'd like to do. But one of the things we didn't do, we did not lay off not one person the whole while we were there, and we kept full strength in the city. Hey, again, I'm going to interrupt you, Mayor, and I'm going to ask the audience, please, no clapping. Those are the rules set out, agreed to by the candidates. Please do not interrupt the candidates when they answer. Mayor, finish your uh, statement, please. So I think that you have to look at the entire city and see how you compensate all of the employees. But the proper way to do it is to do a wage comparability study, policemen, firemen, public works, every area of the city, to make sure we treat them all fairly. Okay, thank you very much. Our uh, next topic is... I believe we're going to let Mayor Stimson... Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor Stimson. I'm jumping ahead. My bad. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Before answering the question, I think we need a fact check on the doors going to the mayor's office. All the security there was installed by Mayor Jones. Uh, I was told there's more security to get to his office than there was into the uh, White House. But that's just the fact check. Um, when it comes to competitive salaries, Yes, we saw, the, um, we saw the wage studies, but we didn't need a wage study because there was one done across the nation that said that Mobile's policemen were one among the lowest paid in the nation. Uh, we didn't just think about it. We figured out a way to give them a raise. Uh, we, we had to not give a raise that was promised during the previous administration, but I said when we can afford it, we will give a raise. And I didn't say that just to the policemen. It was to all employees. All em employees have gotten three raises uh, during my administration. The police and fire have gotten four. So I don't know how I can say much more other than we have done it. But if you do not pay a competitive wage, you will not be able to hire, retain, or train the very best. And that's what we've got to do going forward. And I will pledge to do that as long as I'm the mayor. 
Our next topic is Golf Quest. Mayor Jones, you led the charge to build the Golf Quest Maritime Museum. It cost the city, it's been different figures, approximately $40 million. Mayor Stimson, you closed that museum a year after it opened, and then you reopened it on a limited basis. Was the project a mistake, and what should be done moving forward? And uh, Mayor Stimson, you're first. Yep. Um, we inherited a terrible mess with Gulf Quest. It took us a year to keep uh, the, those contractors, eight general contractors, uh, from suing each other. Uh, it kind of reminds Mobilians of what happened with Government Plaza when it was being built with the cost overruns. And so, but what we have there is we have a very nice, well-built building today, which happens to occupy maybe the best square the best frontage along the river. And so we've got to figure out a way to do something with it. Uh, we closed it down because Mobilians did not show up. And the reason they didn't show up was they were so exasperated by the cost overruns, by the delays in construction, they just had it by the time it opened. So they didn't show up. But we are looking at GovQuest the same way we looked at the empty cruise terminal. We will find a solution to the GovQuest just like we did the empty cruise terminal because it's, it's a valuable asset. We just haven't figured it out at this time, but we will continue to work until we get the job done. Mayor Jones. Peter, I didn't start GovQuest. I inherited GovQuest. It was there way before me. GovQuest started uh, back during Mayor Dow's term. Uh, when I got in office, GovQuest was at the point where the board of GovQuest really is who managed GovQuest. Uh, when it got to our point, we had the construction. We had the responsibility of constructing it, which we did. The problem with GovQuest was management. It never was properly managed. The day that it opened, I don't think it was properly managed or staffed. I think really it was really overly ambitious about what would happen with that particular bill and in terms of how much you could charge people to come to a brand new attraction in Mobile that nobody even knew what it looked like inside. The other thing was is that I think the management team that we had there really were not equipped to manage that particular facility. But in any case, Whenever you go to the city of Mobile and you take over running the city, you don't whine about what you inherited. You find a way to make it work. That's the way you do that. And, you know, I inherited a whole lot of things, but you never heard me make a statement about them. I roll up my sleeve and make them work. Thank you, Mayor. We're going to take our only break of the evening right now. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of the transportation issues facing the city. Plus, we'll look at some of the decisions made by the candidates that impact the way you shop. Stay with us on News 5, your local election headquarters. What's new about high school football this year? Everything. News 5's Friday Night Football Fever. We get you off the sidelines and into the action. New winners, new upsets. Friday Night Football Fever, starting August 25th on News 5. After surviving a fiery plane crash, Trip Pittman decided to serve others. Pittman was elected to the legislature and fought for conservative values. Trip Pittman is the only businessman and only Republican from South Alabama who will work with President Trump to repeal Obamacare, build a border wall, defend our gun rights, and pass term limits. I'm Trip Pittman, and I approve this message because South Alabama deserves a voice in the U.S. Senate. Aggressive, focused, determined representation. It's not just a slogan. It's a commitment that leads to the best possible results. Aggressive representation means taking the lead, going on the offensive, and leaving no stone unturned. Focused representation means setting all distractions aside and giving full attention to the case. Determined representation means staying the course and diligently working through any obstacles or challenges. Call 251-333-2233. Your home isn't just a home, it's an investment. Your house could be under attack by termites. Locally owned and operated, Bugmaster uses the revolutionary Centricon system to eliminate the termites at first sight. Centricon provides a barrier around your home using the Centricon station to eliminate the colony, tricking termites into distributing the bait to their colony, ultimately eliminating and killing the queen and destroying the colony. Call today to learn more at 666-4402 or go to Bugmaster.com. Rain, 
Flooding and severe weather happen fast. Count on a local weather team that's faster. The First Alert Storm Team. Faster to alert you on air, online, and on mobile. So you can take action faster to stay safe. Count on the First Alert Storm Team. And welcome back to our mayoral debate on News 5. We'll continue now by talking about the proposed I-10 bridge. Are you for it? Are you against it? How important is it? And if you're for it, how do you get the state and the federal government to move quickly on this project? Mayor Jones, you're first. Uh, I think the bridge is necessary. I've worked with it for several years. I, I think funding has been an issue. Uh, I thought we could get it funded since we hosted Donald Trump down here at the last stadium. I, I thought we might get funded. We didn't get anything out of that. But uh, the bridge is necessary, but I think we have to be very careful about how it's constructed. The bridge, as I saw the design for it, really encouraged people to bypass Mobile. I think there should be an entrance into Mobile prior to you getting up on the bridge that's really an entrance that's very, very easy access that would allow you to come into downtown Mobile. Other than that, we could very easily become a pass-through city. And I don't want to see us become a pass-through city. But I think based on what happens in the tunnel, on certain times of day, on certain days, the bridge as an overpass is completely necessary. I think the design of the bridge is very, very important to the future of Mobile. Thanks, Mayor Jones. Mayor Stimson? Yeah. The bridge is absolutely crucial to the growth of the city of Mobile. Uh, today, we're strangled uh, in downtown Mobile because of the, the gridlock that occurs late in the afternoon. Uh, if you think about the commerce that's going to be created by Walmart, the commerce that's going to be created by Amazon and those suppliers that will follow, uh, it's absolutely crucial that the bridge be built. Um, the port was recently named the fastest growing port in North America. Uh, to not have the bridge would stifle the growth of that. For the last three years, we have worked, uh, I have worked with ALDOT. Um, I mean, the number of meetings we've had talking about design, talking about entranceways, uh, ALDOT has done an incredible job working with the Obama administration before the end of um, Governor Ivey's term, they say they will have it teed up and ready for construction and that all we will lack will be the money, which is a big deal because it's a billion five. But the prediction is that in 2019 we will have uh, the construction begin on that bridge and so let's keep our fingers crossed that that actually happens because it's absolutely a must for uh, increased commerce. We'll stay on the topic of uh, transportation now. Let's turn it over to Roseanne. Our next question comes from John Hearn, one of our WKRG News 5 Facebook fans. And Hearn would like to know, what are your plans for public transportation in the city of Mobile? Mayor Stimson? Yeah. When it comes to public transportation, for us to ever be a great city, you're going to have to have better, better public transportation than what exists today. Uh, in the years past, and almost with no change over a 40-year period, uh, routes really have not been changed. And so we've been servicing the county. Uh, we've been servicing areas outside of the city of Mobile. Uh, recently, the city council cut $600,000 out of the budget. Uh, we had to address that, so we, we quit moving um, uh, some of the routes out into the county. We asked the county if they would help pay for it. They said no. We asked the uh, municipalities, municipalities if they would pay for it, and they said no. So with having the budget cut, our option was to make those reductions. But going forward, we have got to have a better more sophisticated bus system, so we've been engaging with a company called Remix, who's on the leading edge of computerization modeling for busing. Uh, they've already started working on how we enhance that, and we look forward to working with them because we've got to do a better job so it's not just, rid, uh, just the people riding the bus to work, but they're also riding it all over the city. Mayor Jones. Public transportation is completely necessary, and the expansion of public transportation is what we should look at. We should really look at a regional public transportation system. Uh, Mobile is the economic hub for the entire region. We should be moving people in and out of the region on public transportation. The sad thing about what's been done, the routes that's been cut, people who go to dialysis, 
people who are in wheelchairs, people who need specialized transportation have no access to transportation because the federal law says if you stop running the route in those areas, you can't pick up those individuals. So we've really caused some serious hardships for a certain segment of our population. Further, the buses have been denied access even to hospitals and doctor's offices. They have to park sometime three blocks from the hospital and people, regardless of their condition, have to walk three blocks to get to the doctor's office. I rode the buses a week or so ago. I rode that route and talked to people on the bus and it is really a sad story that they tell about them losing access to transportation. And sometimes we assume because we have a car, everybody has a car. That's what I mean about the underserved. We have no relationship to them. Our next question is about uh, retail and incentivizing retail. Mayor Jones, you brokered the deal for McGowan Park, which gave incentives to developers, but at this point seems to have failed to boost the sales tax revenue significantly in the city. And Mayor Stimson, you've given some incentives to upgrade Bel Air Mall. Meantime, across the country, more stores and malls are closing as people choose to shop online more and more. So going forward, what, what role should the city play in incentivizing retail and have tax dollars already spent on these endeavors been wasted? And Mayor Jones, your first. McGowan Park was a project where the people there had to bring in new businesses that we didn't have in Mobile. It wasn't enhancing businesses that's been here for years. It was really bringing something new to the community, a different concept of shopping which is a, really a very successful concept. If you go to McGowan Park, you'll see some of the success of it. It takes us some time to build up. But the other issue is we're still competing with Baldwin County, who have already done that. And, and what they've done is they've got Bass Pro Shop and a lot of other amenities over there that people go to shop. And the, the, the other thing about it is uh, people in Baldwin County don't have to come to Mobile to shop anymore. They just get their check in Mobile. They shop in Baldwin County. Mayor Stimson? Um, as I stand here today, uh, after having done two incentive projects for retail, uh, I would say that it's not a wise use of our dollars. Um, I think that the McGowan Park idea, as it was presented by the city council, uh, I think they'd made their mind up it was going to be done. And so when you look at the deal of McGowan Park, uh, we felt like that kind of the cow was out of the barn, or the horse was out of the barn, and so we did the two others, and we put very heavy constraints uh, for improved business that had to be above the existing level of what the centers were doing, but I do not think it's a wise use of uh, tax dollars. The, um, and that really, McGowan Park was the very first time that it had been done. That was a learning lesson. I think it's a, a bad deal for the city of Mobile. If you look at how much money will ultimately be paid to the developer, we will pay that developer uh, over a 20-year period approximately $80 million, uh, which if you compare it to other developments and other incentive packages, is probably not uh, in the best interest of the city. But I think that we have learned a lesson from what has been done. So going forward, I don't foresee us doing it uh, anymore. Let's talk about jail overcrowding. Mayor Stimson, you propose making more offenses, uh, tick ticketable offenses, rather than arresting somebody, yeah. bringing them down, and booking them into the uh, metro jail. What else, what more can be done to reduce overcrowding at the jail and also the cost to taxpayers of metro jail? And Mayor Stimson, you are first. Well, well the city bears a, a huge responsibility uh, when it comes to paying for the cost of the jail. When we uh, were elected, we averaged about 250 what were referred to as municipal inmates in the county jail. Uh, because of what we did in uh, restructuring and uh, fixing the municipal court system and allowing people to sign their own bonds and some other th changes that we made where they could work instead of being locked up or they could, uh, they could spend the night at home, we dropped that to an occupancy on the average, the last time I saw the number was about 50 inmates. That saves the county and the city a huge amount of money. And so from an overcrowding standpoint, 
what we're trying to do with the ticketing is to make sure that people are not incarcerated uh, for some minor offense. They need to be at work, and if they have to come down to go to court, then they're going to miss work. And if the judge happens to say, hey, guess what, uh, you know, I can't do it today, come back, that's two days of work. Well, our policemen are off the street, and the, the worker is off the uh, out of his job, and so that's why we're focusing on trying to change it, because it will be the benefit of all of those uh, that happen to come uh, into contact with the law enforcement. All right. Thanks, Mayor Stimson. Mayor Jones? For the last 10 years, there have been alternative programs to the jail. The question has been whether they've been properly used. The other thing I would say about that is that ticketing people, that sounds good. But I would assure you that the city got millions of dollars of backlogs of tickets right now that they can't collect. Millions of dollars. And I think that uh, it would be good, uh, fact check this, go and look to see how much money is owed to the city as it relates to ticketing because it's a process that does not work. Okay, thanks, Mayor Jones. Uh, candidates, states and cities across the nation are decriminalizing personal use of marijuana. Do you favor such a move? Mayor Jones, you're first. I have not been in favor of that. And the reason I haven't been in favor of it is because of some of the ills that we see as a result of that. Uh, I don't want to see our young people get access to a drug like marijuana. If, if we're going to set some age limit, then I would be willing to look at it, but not just a blanket decriminalization of it because what winds up happening, we wind up with young people, even school age, which some of them are into school age marijuana use right now. I think that's a detriment to the community and I think it will serve to be a detriment even more in the future if we do that. But I think that if we're talking about uh, adults, then I think we have to look at how it's going to apply and what it takes to make that work without really infiltrating our young people. Okay, thanks, Mayor Jones. Uh, Mayor Stimson? Yeah. When we proposed the ordinance uh, about making ticketable offenses, uh, the left hand got a little bit ahead of the right hand. Uh, subsequently, as it rolled out, we realized that really there is no way mayors have the authority to decriminalize uh, marijuana or anything else. Uh, I, too, am against the decriminalization of marijuana. Uh, and so, as I said, we got a little ahead of ourselves. Uh, but I think that as it comes back up uh, after the election, we'll be able to address it uh, in a, a more open forum. Thank you, Mayor. The next question concerns Carnival Cruises, and Carnival recently signed a year extension to stay in Mobile. But what's your long-term plan for making sure that Mobile remains a viable cruise ship destination? And Mayor Stimson, you go first. Yeah. It's very important to Carnival that, they, that their um, cruisers have a great experience uh, in the city. From the time they leave their house to the time they get on the boat, have the cruise, get off the boat, and they uh, hang around Mobile, they want the part of the interaction of the city of Mobile to be a great experience because that's part of their philosophy. Uh, we have worked diligently to make that a better experience. They have told us that we have done a magnificent job uh, fulfilling that part of our obligation. So we will continue to do that, and that's really the best opportunity that we have with a number of cruisers that we have coming through the city to actually get them to stay here a little bit longer. Uh, hindsight being 2020, and this is not a criticism, but if you'd move the uh, parking for the cruise terminal a little further away, uh, where they had to hang around downtown to get to their cars, you may have had an opportunity to get them into our restaurants and so forth. But uh, we will continue to work with Carnival to be business friendly, to be meet their needs, and uh, knowing that it does have an impact on where they put ships because as people feel better about their cruises, they spend more money, and that's hugely important. Thank you very much. Mayor Jones? There are two things that we need. First, we need to recruit another ship. We need to recruit from Royal Caribbean, from some of the other cruise lines, to make sure that we have more than one ship coming into the terminal. Secondly, we need some attractions that keep people into Mobile. We need to be competitive with other cruise ports that have those kind of attractions. So one of the things, and we brought up GovQuest before, the board of GovQuest was actually looking at GovQuest as being an attraction that you can't see anywhere else. 
they thought that that would help tourists as well as people on the cruise have a reason to stay in Mobile more than one day. When people come into Mobile one day for a cruise, the way that we have constructed the terminal is that you don't really have to come out of the terminal. You can drive in the parking garage, get out of your car, go into the ship, come back, get in your car, and get back on the interstate. And that really is not the way that we can stimulate our economy with cruises. So I think what we have to do is get another ship and be more competitive as a port. And I think uh, 2007, we were the number one port in the whole carnival system, and basically because of the parking. Thanks, Mayor Jones. Next question involves the Mobile Bay Bears. What, if anything, should be done to keep the Bay Bears in town? What role do professional sports play, both in terms of a city's image and also quality of life within the city? Mayor Jones, you go first. I think professional sports can play a huge role. And I think we need to do whatever is necessary to try to get another team to sponsor the Bay Bears a major league team. They've had a couple over the years, and I think that we have to keep the Bay Bears here. We have something that no one else can sell, and that's we're the home of the home run king of the major leagues, Hank Aaron. His home is there. He's very invested in it. I talk to him on a monthly basis, and we need to make sure that we make that work, the Bay Bears Stadium. But we also need to look at an aquatic center. We need to look at renovating and expanding the tennis center. That's the largest municipal tennis center in the country. Further, we need to look at a soccer complex. That's competition soccer. And I think that once we get those kind of sports amenities in, we could really bridge a gap that we really are not bridging right now. I would like to see us really do a sportsplex where we can put all of those in an area where we can have competitions with regulation size swimming pools, regulation size courts, regulation size soccer fields. Mayor Stimson? When it comes to the Bay Bears, when the Bay Bears were first here, we had a lot of local participation and ownership, which certainly makes a difference uh, in the enthusiasm and the excitement and the communications between the mayor's office and the ownership. Today we have an owner that's absentee out of New York. Um, we have had challenges uh, working with him, but we've been able to do the very best we can. Our hope is, is that if it sells, uh, that there will be local participation. We do have individuals that are talking with the current owners uh, to do that. The responsibility that the city has uh, is to make sure that the stadium uh, is well maintained. Uh, we had fallen behind in that, but now we have caught up with all of our obligations. So. Under new ownership, we're hopeful that we'll be able to talk them into staying in Mobile. And there is a huge opportunity when it comes to not, uh, not just professional sports, but we have, I think, 28 professional athletes today. Uh, it would be great if we can figure out a way for them to give back to the community and help us in our parks and recs areas uh, because we're, we need to do a better job there. And uh, we're working on some of them right now. One of them is about that tall. Uh, goes by DeMarcus, and I'm hopeful he's, he will help us. Thanks, Mayor Stimson. Next question involves uh, the mayor's staff, uh, your top appointees, your cabinet, so to speak. Should, they ref should that reflect the demographics of the city, and should those appointees be required to live in the city of Mobile? Mayor Stimson, you're first. When it comes to the requirement to the city of Mobile, uh, live in the city of Mobile, visualize sitting down with the, the CEO of Airbus, and you're talking to him about coming to the city, and you say, well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm, so, I, I'm just going to tell you that everybody that you employ has to live in the city of Mobile. Do that for every existing business in the city of Mobile. Do it for the Mobile Infirmary. Do it for the Providence. Just any business. So to think that we can constrain the leadership of the city of Mobile to just living in the city, what has happened is that the city, because of various reasons, neglect in certain areas, people have chosen to live elsewhere because the quality of life was better in those places. What we've got to do, what we've been trying to do, is improve the quality of life so the people that live outside the city limits will move back into the city because the real economic development, too, going forward, it's really not the economic incentives. It's about creating and having the people live in the community. If you have the right talent living in the community, the businesses will come here. But the city government should not be constrained about uh, where individuals live. 
Mayor Jones, if you are being paid with the public dollar from the citizens of Mobile, if you are making decisions about their lives, you are making decisions about the conditions of their community, if you are sitting on a board in the city of Mobile that makes decisions about the quality of life in Mobile, you ought to be a citizen and be a part of what you're making decisions on. Now, I'm not talking about Airbus, and we're talking about the city of Mobile. If we look at the city of Mobile, the decision makers up on the 10th floor, a number of them live in Baldwin County. Not only that, people who serve on our boards live in Baldwin County, but I don't know anybody in Mobile who serves on a board in Daphne or Fairhope or any of those other cities over there. And you know, it's, it's fine for them to run it that way, but I think we got just as many qualified people to sit on boards in Mobile if they do in Daphne. And I, I think that that ought to be a requirement. We required it for a number of people, like our department heads had to reside in the city of Mobile, and they did. And you know, the diversity of those department heads, we, we also required that. But more importantly, if you're going to make a decision on my quality of life, you ought to be here to witness what it is. Thank you, Mayor Jones. I'm going to ask each of you now to uh, say something nice about your opponent, compliment them, and, and be specific. <laughs> be specific about something that they've accomplished during their term uh, as mayor. And, and uh, Mayor Jones, you'll go first on this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I. When we actually transitioned, um, I gave Sandy some advice on some things that I thought that I should pass on to him. Most of it he didn't take, but I, I gave him some advice on, on some things that I thought, it, and, and you know, one of them, I wanted to always be able to say, I told you so. <laughs> and the one I wanted to be able to say, I told you so about is I talked to you about fire chiefs. And as a result of that, we had to go a long time without one. But I think that he, he finally selected someone who, who I think it, it would be a great choice for the city. So I, I think that worked out. Thank you. Um, I'm, also re I'm, also re I'm also reminded that Sam told me to be sure to put my big boy pants on, uh, which I did. I did that also. Uh, but, you know, Sam Jones uh, served our country. Uh, he has served the county and he has served the city, uh, and for that, uh, our community should be grateful. Okay, along the same lines, going to ask you each, what was your biggest mistake as mayor? Uh, mayor Stimson, you've been four years. Mayor Jones, you had eight years. What's your biggest mistake? And Mayor Stimson, you go first. Well, it wasn't a mistake, but it was something I said that maybe should have been tempered a little differently. Uh, we created a lot of conversation. We said we we're going to tear the Civic Center down. That was rookie, politi rookie politician. Uh, but I, when I reflect on that, what it did, though, is it engaged our citizens in such a way. And because I knew and could feel the passion that people have for the Civic Center, I knew that I had to be more sensitive and had to be further outreaching to the concerns to make sure that we don't lose something that's meant so much uh, to so much of our community. So um, thank goodness that uh, the way our system is set up, a mayor can't just go willy-nilly do something. Uh, he can test ideas. That was an idea tested, and I, I learned a lot. Uh, but really, we do have to do something with the Civic Center, and it won't be necessarily an easy uh, job, but I look forward to something being there that is better than what we have because we're a city that's on the move, and that, con that Civic Center is not representative of who we are or what we can be. All right, Mayor Jones. I think uh, my big, biggest mistake was uh, thinking that the people who I was serving with were as anxious as I was to move the city forward. And um, as a result of that, uh, even the one cent sales tax, we started that back in 2009, and it was put on and taken off, put on and taken off, put on and taken off. And it really caused us more of an issue than it should have in the city. 
had it stayed on when it was put on, we'd be in much, much better financial shape at the city of Mobile. And I misjudged the real intent of what everybody was supposed to be trying to do, and that was to make us the most competitive city in the United States. All right, thank you, Mayor Jones. It's time now for our closing statements. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to do so, and Mayor Stimson, you go first. You know, for the first time, Mobilians, the first time in a long time, Mobilians are very proud of this city. You know, there's never been a greater choice in leadership styles or philosophies on how the city should go forward. Uh, my opponent is talking about dividing the city and taking it back. Uh, this is not a time to be divided by racist politics. It's a crying shame that over the last few weeks that we've been hearing this false narrative, I ask you, do not fall for that. We are a safer city today. We are more business friendly and we are more family friendly. I will continue to work tirelessly to make sure that we fulfill the vision that we created for One Mobile. There's a generational opportunity. I keep talking about it. And whether you look around and you see the city streets being repaired, or whether you see an esprit de corps in the police department and the fire department that you haven't witnessed in a long time, or whether it's the creation of jobs that is going on, Mobile is on the move. The momentum is real. And we can't afford to change that right now. Gene and I have been honored and humbled and grateful for the opportunity to serve as the mayor and the first lady. The future has never been brighter. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. We can't afford to miss it. I would hope that you would vote, and I ask you to vote for Sandy Stimson on August 22nd. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Stimson. Uh, Mayor Jones, your closing remarks. I've heard the statement about <clears throat> division in our campaign effort. There is nothing that ever come out of my campaign that promotes division. That's not even my nature. My time in the military, a lot of that time was spent doing just that. I worked, my last duty station, I worked for Senator John McCain, and my job was bridging gaps among people. My title was Racial Awareness Facilitator in the Navy. That's what I did. So I'm accustomed with working with people from different walks of life. I'm accustomed to letting people know that they have a lot more in common than they have separate from each other. Mobile is that way. When I ran for office in 2005, I thought that Mobile was the greatest city in this country as it relates to diversity. And the reason I felt that way is because of how this community came together to start moving forward. And I believe that this community still has that character. I think some of the things that we've seen in other places, some of the national rhetoric that we've heard, really kind of tempers some of that. But I am interested in everyone in this community having an equal opportunity to be successful. I've always done that. I've got a record of that. And what I would say to you is that I am ready to move forward and I ask that you vote for Sam Jones on August 22nd. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I'd like to thank the candidates so much for this public service. Thank you to the studio audience, Davidson High School, and thank you to the viewers at home that sent in our questions tonight. Tonight's WKRG News 5 mayoral debate has been brought to you by Bugmaster and Christopher L. George, PC.